So in this example, if you guys remember what we did in the last one, first thing we want to do is set it equal to 0, right? We cannot determine our a, b, and c until it's set equal to 0. I always like to set it. I always like to make my, my x squared, my quadratic term, positive. So I always get, I always, whatever, get it to the side where that term is going to be positive. All right, so I have 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 equals 0. Everybody follow me? Yes, question? The, no. As long as you determine the right a, b, and c, you could determine, yeah, we'll use the opposite of those two. That's pretty fine. I'm just saying where mistakes are made, the students make mistakes on that part. So that's why I do it. But no, you don't have to do it. Um, then the next thing is we want to determine our a, b, and c. a equals 2, b equals negative 5, c equals 3. Then the next thing is we want to learn a little bit more about the discriminant, right? Because we could. We could see if this could be factorable. We could use completing the square and so forth. But if I'm going to use quadratic form, I at least want to know what type of problem am I going to have. So I do b squared minus 4 times a times c. Plug in my b. Notice how I'm using parentheses when I'm plugging in numbers. Okay, That just reminds me of what I'm doing. Well, b squared is going to be, or negative 5 squared is negative 5 times negative 5, which is positive 25. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 3 is? negative 24. So in reality, it's 25 minus 24, which is just 1. Can you take the square root of 1? Yeah, it's 1, right? 1 times 1 is 1. So that's just nice to know, but I'm, they're not asking me to find the discriminant. They're actually asking me to solve. So I need to use the quadratic formula, which is opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So now I plug in all of my terms. So I have x equals opposite of negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 1 divided by 2 times 2. Does everybody see how this 1 went right there? That's why I like to find the discriminant first, because whatever that value is, it's still part of the quadratic formula. So now, to go ahead and simplify this, square root of 1 is just 1. Opposite of negative 5 is just positive 5. So I have positive 5 plus or minus 1 over 4. So now what you're simply doing, if you guys remember how I wrote my solution sets up here, we can easily just write this as 5 plus 1 over 4, 5 minus 1 over 4. Well, that can obviously be simplified, right? 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 over 4 is 6 fourths, which you can be reduced to. 3 halves, 5 minus, four, 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. OK? So obviously, ladies and gentlemen, when you have two real, solution, two real rational solutions, you can simplify that into actual you know, numbers. But when you have the ir or to actual real rational numbers. But when you have the irrational, the, ha the answer had to stay irrational. So that's why we left that square root in there, because we can't evaluate for the square root. Yes? It still should have got the same answer, so I'll have to look at your work individually. So you put the negative 2 over there, and you had positive 5 and negative 3? Yeah, because I still got like 1 on the discriminant, but. Did you have negative 5? Yeah, because my 5 was positive. Yeah. I'll have to go and take a look at your work. You should have the same answer. You'll have the same answer. You should have the same answer, though. All right. Anybody have any questions?